But we begin with the Ottawa Senator, something we haven't done in a while, who announced this morning that they fired CEO Jim Little. 54 days ago, they hired him for that job. It was basically a Kardashian wedding. In a statement, the Sen said Little was relieved of his duties because of, quote, a result of conduct inconsistent with the core values of the Ottawa Senators and the National Hockey League. Okay. As we all remember, the league, in response to some highly publicized incidents regarding workplace conduct this year, and we've been on the desk for a lot of it, put together a four-point plan to combat a lot of those situations. But today, Bettman basically told us this Jim Little thing in Ottawa isn't what we may think it is. It's not what you think or would be suggested. It relates more to, uh, uh, well, I generally don't comment on club personnel decisions. It's not one of the things that we were discussing at the board meeting in December. It has to do more with internal operations. And if you want more, you need to talk to the senators about that. All right, so from the SENS, we get didn't meet our core values Mm -hmm. and nothing more. Gary Bettman is saying it's not what you've seen earlier this year in terms of the really hardcore, ridiculous incidents. So it's not any of that. So as of an hour ago, I believe, that's all we had. Then word began to filter that Jim Little himself was going to release a statement. Again, fired this morning, less than 60 days on the job as CEO of the Ottawa Senators. Here is the statement from Jim Little. Quote, I was looking forward to helping the team and the city and the Sens. I wish the employees, the players, and coaches well. They all deserve our support. The statement made today by the team contains some language that deserves some clarification. On Valentine's Day, the owner and I had a personal disagreement over the approach that I had been pursuing. I'm a strong-willed person, and the disagreement included me using some very strong language with him on the phone, including swearing, which he did not appreciate and for which I later apologized. It was these events, to my knowledge, which led to my dismissal. Any other inference from the statement is wrong. What is going on here, Sid? Okay. Okay. Eugene Eugene Melnick is the owner of the team. Yeah. So, in theory, just as a blanket statement before I get into this, He can hire and fire whoever the hell he wants. Mm -hmm. Now, the next CEO and COO hire by this owner, by my math, will be the fifth in three years in that position. I repeat, the next guy to take up this job will be the fifth in three years under King Eugene's reign in the city of Ottawa. Okay? Jim Little has been a high-ranking executive at the following companies. Shaw. Heard of them. Bell. Don't know who they are. Heard of Royal Bank. Yep, yep. You heard of Bombardier? Mm Mm-hmm. So this guy's been pretty successful, and there are times when you're a really successful person that sometimes you don't have time for BS, and maybe you use certain language. Are we all in agreement on that? Are we all in agreement that sometimes business at a high level isn't daycare, and sometimes things get said that are a little pushy to get things done? Are we all on the same page on that? Within reason. There are things you obviously cannot say. You've sworn at me five times today. It's just the business. It's my what, career what we're in. My career would have ended 17 <laughs> years ago. Yeah. If someone let me go because I cursed in a conversation. Mm-hmm. So the notion, and on Valentine's Day when the breakup happened, ironically <laughs> enough, the notion that a curse word, a curse word. Eugene Melnick once called Ian Mendez Bush. Okay. That's one of the nicest human beings I've ever seen in my life. But no, a curse word, that's where, that's where Eugene Melnick draw. You tell me Eugene Melnick's never swore at a human being at work? Hold on. Don't know him. I'm, think think yeah, about it. Okay, play the Jeopardy Has music. Has Eugene yeah. Melnick ever swore at a human being at work? Yes or no? We're all human beings. We've followed hockey. Ottawa, I'm looking at you. Sens Nation, I'm looking at you. What do you think? What do you think? Alex Xero, do you think Eugene Melnick's ever swore at a human being at work? Yes. Ever? Yes. Yes. I agree yes, with you I have. one yes. million yes. percent. Yeah. I completely agree with you. And let me tell you something. 
If I'm Eugene Melnick and I think Jim Little can help me not be a laughing stock, we can schedule 15 minutes after brunch every day where you come in and f bomb me for t- for an extended period of time. Right. If I think you're the best guy for this job, talk to me any way you want. Get me some results. Talk to me any way. I'm thick skinned. I'm an owner of an NHL team. I've been here before. Not my first rodeo. Go ahead. But just in a moment where the Sens were actually getting some good pub. And where this is, look, I don't want this to take away from that. I don't think it is. I think people, I respect Pierre Dorian more. Yeah, after P- I think people understand like what they. It's been silent in Ottawa this year. What were we saying last year? There needs to be no noise. The off season, no noise, no press releases, nothing. Just go and do your business. And for the most part, they have done that. What I will say here is, I don't know who to believe. I don't know what to believe. All I know is, um, a lot of people are. Once again, laughing at the organization for many different reasons. But to sit here and suggest that a CEO of a National Hockey League franchise has been fired for telling uh, their, you know, the the owner to go bleep themselves. I'm sorry. I have a little difficulty believing that one or two harshly put swear words is why we're here today. According so, to Jim Little, that's why we're here, because apparently right, they didn't even his, tell him why he was fired. He said, I believe this is the reason. In his statement, to my knowledge, I think was the words he used. To my knowledge. To my th- knowledge. They haven't really spoken to me about that. So we have done a lot of reading on this today, and um, Ian Mendez, who you mentioned, wrote a story about it, and the National Post wrote a story about it as well, pretty much suggesting the two had not seen eye to eye for some time. I don't know why. So I don't for know. For 54 days? The for, same time? I guess That's the first the month. The, yeah, the first month. I don't know what the problem is here. Um, but I, the tough thing is, I don't think we're ever going to really know why Jim Little is out as CEO. And that's not necessarily a good thing because all it's going to do is lead to a whack of speculation. I will say this I believe this man was retired before. He took this job in Ottawa. So he was in his mid 50s, I think, living in the South. And it sitting on some coin. Sounded like yep. Eugene said, Look, I really want you. I, I appreciate and understand all the work you've put in. And we need fans in the seats. We need our season ticket base to, to go from here to here. And that seemed to be uh, Jim Little's number one priority. You talk about Valentine's Day, okay? Bruce Garriock of the Ottawa Sun on Valentine's Day, posted a pretty in-depth uh, sit-down with Jim Little, who was pretty much a you know, month and a half into his tenure, and he was saying all the right things. It seemed like this was going to be a guy who was going to be in that chair for many, many years. Do you want to hear, so, do you want to hear what Eugene Melnick said about sure. this hire to Post Media? This yep. was back in January. This is from Eugene Melnick in a telephone interview. Quote, Jim Little basically gets it. He's had experience here in Ottawa, he's lived in Ottawa, and he's also had exposure and experience at the highest corporate levels. He's a true hockey fan, and he's looking forward to being at our games. I felt he was the best candidate for the job. So here we are. If you can't vet a guy to get you to 60 days as a CEO... You're one of the worst owners I've ever seen in my life. And James Dolan exists. James Dolan exists. I just tweeted yesterday, James Dolan makes Eugene Malik look like a good owner. I take it back. Oh, this is madness. Uh, I was going to read you some of the stuff from the alleged uh, burner account from Eugene Melnick, but I don't have time for that. It's very uh, good riddance to little Jim. I do have something here I want to read if that's okay. Go ahead. This is from the National Post today. We just got a few paragraphs. I wanted to throw this out there. A close friend of Little's who has spoken to him since his dismissal, but who has asked his name not to be published because of a number of situations, said the firing was preceded by a heated discussion Little had with Melnick. Story says the two men had a recent discussion in which Little was more open and honest in his commentary than he should have been for someone who wants to keep his job. The friend said, Come on. A source with knowledge of the situation from the senator's perspective did not deny the two had a recent face off, but said the dispute was not the reason for the dismissal or the league's involvement. It was a pattern of behavior, not just one incident among other things, the source said. So, this is what I've been talking about. The Sens have their side of the story, and then Jim Little says, 
I told him to go F himself a couple of times, and I've been fired. I don't know who to believe, but the situation, it's, it is a disaster. There's no, there's no doubt about no, it's that. A, but it's a complete embarrassment for the franchise. That's had some good moments here in the last four mm. or five months, and you haven't been able to say that for a while. I'll say this. The language used in the Sens statement today suggested some more nefarious stuff. And if I'm Jim Little and I got some lawyers, and I'm right. assuming he does, I would be making some calls here. Because the, the first assumptions that crossed my mind, I don't even want to repeat here. Because right. it would besmirch Jim even further. And, and thankfully, Gary Bettman kind of soothed it over today in the GM meetings, doing Melnick's job for him as usual. That was ridiculous, the language the Sens used in that, in that statement, if we're talking about swearing at the owner. Because with everything flying around the hockey world nowadays, you've got to be very careful with that. Right. And I thought that was completely irresponsible of whoever wrote this damn thing today. Jim Little, a guy who didn't have to take this job in the first place, all core values, all of a sudden Jim Little's core values are being put into question? Really? Are you kidding me? He just got there. Well, and Really? I, I can't imagine what the conversation would be of Eugene Melnick calling Gary Bettman and saying, look, here's the situation. Our CEO has been around for 54 days. We have a lot of differences. He talks to me in a way that I don't like. I'm going to fire him. I don't know what Gary can do. I don't Gary know if, can't do I don't, anything. Right? Gary really can't I'm do I'm sure anything. he can make some yeah. recommendations. But can you imagine if that actually happened? Gary, my CEO, who I entrusted with getting my season ticket base ramped back up, I'm going to fire him because we look at things a little bit differently. Which, frankly, it was, was probably a good thing for the organization what that maybe need? someone looks at things differently than the owner does. But it's just a, it's a mess. I thought we were going to go all season without Anything we almost got there. out of Ottawa. Almost got there. Like a month away. Pierre, Dor- Pierre Dorian, newfound respect. I don't know how you hang around and do your job sanely. Good on you. And you're doing it well. Keep that up. 